so far, so good for the Rays homestand. Three stellar starting performances helped sweep the White Sox out of St. Pete. Joe Madden and his band of mighty men look to keep the pedal to the metal and continue this run right into the All-Star break. It's time for Rays baseball. Bring on the Twins. Tonight, we welcome you to Tropicana Field. The Rays 10-game homestand continues leading up to the All-Star break. Fresh off the sweep of the White Sox tonight, the Rays open a four-game series hosting the Minnesota Twins. As we take a look at the American League East, the Rays hold a part of second place with a record of 49 and 40, tied with Baltimore four and a half behind the Boston Red Sox. The Rays have made this move by winning 11 of their last 14. And so all of these games important leading right up to the All-Star break. With Brian Anderson, I'm Dwayne Stats. Good to have you aboard tonight. We'll be hearing from Todd Callis. Well, a lot of things have been falling into place for the Rays. Good defense, good pitching, and good hitting. And part of that good hitting has been Desmond Jennings returning to the leadoff spot. Yeah, Desmond Jennings was moved back to the top of the order on June the 19th. On July the 1st, he went back into the leadoff spot full-time, lefties and righties, and look what he's done. He has really solidified the top of the order for the Rays. A 414 average at the six runs batted in. His on-base percentage in those seven games is 500. And how about this? 364 average with runners in scoring position. He has done it by being extremely aggressive at the plate. Not working the counts as much. He is out there ready to hit from pitch number one. And if they want a fastball out over the plate to get ahead, he's taking a rip at it. On the topic of hitting, even though the Twins have lost three in a row coming into this series, they have Joe Maurer, who's hitting over 400 for his career here at the Trop. I mean, Joe Maurer, that's what he does. The face of the franchise. He's going to go down as one of the best hitting catchers in the history of this game. And you see what he's been able to accomplish. Three American League batting titles. In fact, of all active players, his career average is 322. Of all active players, he is number one, just ahead of Albert Pujols. You see the MVP, gold gloves, six-time All-Star. He's going to start this year in that game. And how about this also? Runners in scoring position for his career, 339 average. Unreal. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, on the topic of hitting, Luke Scott is hot. And he's up in the number two spot for the Rays. Todd Callis takes a look at the great Scott in a moment.
Well, Luke Scott getting ready on this Monday night. Hit number two in the Rays lineup. Moving up as Joe Madden recognizes when a hitter is hot. And that has been the case for Luke Scott. The Rays play the first of four against the Minnesota Twins. Riding a streak of eight out of nine and 11 of their last 14 games in the win column. For Luke Scott, an impressive run, especially when you consider this. Evan Longoria had to miss a few games at third base with that plantar fasciitis. Moved into the DH role. So Luke didn't even play or didn't start at least in that series in Houston. But during this stretch, even with that little layoff in Houston, Luke continues to be hot. You can see what he's done the last 17 games. His hitting coach, Derek Shelton, really likes the swing pad lately from Luke. You know, I think he's in a better position to hit. You know, it's something he's worked on the last month or so. I think, uh, you know, you're seeing the fruits of, of work over, you know, the course of a month. I think we're seeing him use the whole field better. Uh, you're seeing better carry on the ball. You know, there's more backspin. I mean, the ball he hit yesterday for a triple wasn't a ball that he you know, hit extremely well, but he got it right on the barrel and backspun it and, you know, almost backspun it out of here. So I think that's what we're seeing. The path is more consistent, so we're seeing better spin on the ball. We are less than three minutes away from the first pitch. Roberto Hernandez will be on the mound for the Rays. Samuel Deduno will get the start tonight for the Minnesota Twins. The Rays hope to keep rolling with their starting pitching lately. We'll have all the game action right around the corner, right here on Sunsport. Sun Sports is brought to you by Coventry Healthcare. Coverage so you can keep living the life you want. Go live. We've got you covered. By the Tampa Bay Times. Amazing stories only in the 2013 Pulitzer Prize winning Tampa Bay Times. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Rays meet the Minnesota Twins to open this four-game series. A lively dugout to start this evening, led by Yanel Escobar. Sweet Bay Supermarkets presents the starting lineup here for the Minnesota Twins with Brian Dozier at second base leading off, followed by Joe Maurer. The DH is Ryan Domit. Justin Mordo at first base. Trevor Blue at third. Oswaldo Arcia is in left field hitting sixth in front of Chris Parmalee. Aaron Hicks in center hits eighth and Pedro Florma is the shortstop. He'll bat ninth. He'll take the mound tonight for the Tampa Bay Rays. Going to be right-hander Roberto Hernandez making his 17th start of the season looking to get back 
into the win column. Four and ten record on the year. ERA just under five. These numbers brought to you by Coventry Healthcare of Florida. And so Roberto Hernandez ready to make his 17th start with Brian Dozier in the batter's box. And the first pitch of this game is a strike and presented by Pinch of Penny. This one comes in on him, gets part of his hand, and he's going to go to first. That man got him got on the him. elbow, yeah. I think. Well, you can see the way he's holding that right on the funny bone. This ball runs in. We've seen this before from Roberto Hernandez. That ball just takes off, catches him right on the inside of that elbow. That's the eighth hitter Hernandez has hit this year. And it's not because he's going to looking for people, but it's that late movement. Yep. Well, when he stays on top of the baseball and down in the zone, he gets the sink down. When the ball flattens out and it's up a little bit, it really takes off and can run like that. And it just tracks those guys right down. So just like that on the second pitch of the game, Minnesota with a base runner for Joe Maurer. Pitch is away. So Maurer 312, that's good enough for eighth in the American League and hitting. Mentioned in the open what he's done here in the trop, what he's done for his career. He's done with men in scoring position. And his numbers really across the board are, are incredible. 322 lifetime average. It's highest among all active players in the big leagues right now. That runners in scoring position just blew me away. 339 for his career. Yep. You talk about clutch. There you see 423 here at Tropicana Field, second among active players in visiting ballparks. Joey Votto at Minute Maid Park has done quite well at 427. Yeah, and look at the other ones. Minute Maid Park twice, Coors Field twice. <laughs> that makes what Maurer has done here all the more impressive because this is not Coors or Minute Maid in terms of being friendly to the offensive side of the game. In fact, this skews a little bit the other way. Yeah. Yep. Three and zero now to Mauer. That's a strike, and it's three and one. But you see him up here in the in the two hole now, and that's because of the type of hitter that he's become the last few years. I mean, he had 28 home runs in 2009. Now, since then, from 2010 till today, right now, he's hit 30 home runs in 1,678 at-bats. He just sprays the ball around the field, much like James Loney. And Hernandez walks it. So a hit batter and a walk. And the first two men are on base. Let's take a quick look at the Rays' defense as it lines up tonight. The outfield left to right, Joyce Jennings and Myers across the infield third to first. Longoria, Escobar, Sobras, and Loney. Jose Molina will be behind the plate. Ryan Domit, the designated hitter, a switch hitter. Better average from the right side, but more power from the left side for Domit. Pitch is a strike. Jerry Lane, the veteran umpire behind the plate, 24 plus years in the major leagues. And if you give him a chance and you're consistent around both corners, there's a good chance you might get a call or two on the corners with him behind the plate. The double play ball, Zobris Escobar over to Loney for the 4 6 3 double play. And it was a nice job of the timing there on Yunel Escobar as he came into the bag. That ball sharply hit Ben Zobras. Able to get the double play started. You see where Escobar sets up. Backhand here, and then just kind of wait for it. Boom, set himself up for a nice 
relay over there to Loney to get the two for one. That's the ninth double play behind Roberto Hernandez this year. And when he's right, you'll see a lot of that because of that sinker. Justin Morno. He looks at a strike. Back when he was having those great years with Cleveland, he had one year when there were 32 ground ball double plays behind him. 2007? That was it. And that sinker was just unbelievable as you witnessed. Yeah, well, that was the one year that I had coming off the back to back Tommy John surgeries, had taken that year off and was helping out the. Sports Time Ohio with a with a weekly uh, show his set a front row seat for him. His ground ball percentage was almost 77 percent that year. Yeah. Oh, he was he was just lights out. In fact, between him and Sabathia, one and four in Cy Young voting. Chop to second and Zobris takes care of that. Two men on, nobody out. Couple of ground balls and you're out of the inning. Out of the top half. We'll take a look at the Rays lineup put together by Joe Madden and presented by Sweet Bay Supermarkets. Desmond Jennings leading off with Luke Scott, the DH hitting second. Then Ben Zobris, Evan Longoria, James Loney, and Will Myers down the middle. And Joyce hit seventh in front of Jose Molina and Yunel Escobar at shortstop bat tonight. Taking them out tonight for the Minnesota Twins. Going to be right hander Samuel Deduno making his ninth start of the season. His numbers brought to you by Coventry Healthcare of Florida. This time, Desmond Jennings takes the first pitch, and that's in there for a strike. Desmond at 266 now. And a check swing hopper back to the mound. You know, with the pickup and the flip to first, one away. Let's take a quick look at the Minnesota Twin defense as it lines up tonight. The top behind the Duno. In the outfield, left to right, Oswaldo Arcia, Aaron Hicks, and Chris Parmalee across the infield. Third to first, Trevor Plouffe, Pedro Florman, Brian Dozier, and Justin Morneau. Joe Maurer will handle the catching duties. Now Luke Scott has moved his average up over 260, and he's been on quite a run. We'll go back 17 games, 13 of those starting, and that helps. He's hitting 377 in that stretch. He's gone from 207 to 262. Well, that's exactly the kind of hitter that Luke Scott is. He came in with a reputation of being streaky, and that's exactly what the Rays have seen in the good ways and in the bad ways. Right now on that good streak and Joe Madden looking to take advantage of that moving him up into the two spot. Well you play the hot hand and yeah. that's what Madden is doing. Right. 
three and one. Now for to do know it is all about command. His fastball can move one of three ways. I mean, it's got sync to it. It'll cut sometimes and does not do it on purpose. Just try to keep the ball down. In fact, and a shot into right center field. Well tagged by Scott, and it's gone. Home run for Luke Scott. The Rays break out in front. You know, as a, as a pitcher, you don't ever want to be in a 3-1 count. You want to avoid those at all costs, especially against a guy who is red hot, and that would be Luke Scott. And you, we heard Derek Shelton, the hitting coach, talking about being able to get some backspin and carry. This was just a line drive. It looked like a gapper in right center field that just did not come down, and it gets into the stands with some hair on it. It's his sixth home run of the year, and that is playing the hot hand. With some rat tail on it. Want to know the count to Ben Zobrist? That is an aggressive hairdo right there. I love it. I love any hair at this point. Well, Joe Madden's philosophy when it comes to how you dress or how you wear your hair, if you think it makes you look hot, that's fine with him. <laughs> well, Luke Scott is hot. And boy, he just proved it with that home run. Two and one, the count to Zobris. I mean, that's 1988. It's a good year. A two two count. They're all good years. Well, that one, that, that, that was the appetite for destruction year, Guns N' Roses. That's a good year. Hey, they could re-release that album today and it would still sound relevant. Zobrist out on strikes. That is what you got to look out for. This is why he gets ahead of the count. He loves to go to this curveball, and it is a filthy pitch, a true 12-6 with late action. And he's mainly the fastball, the changeup, and the curveball. And what I was going to say before is Joe Maurer has told me, talked about his fastball moving all over the place. He has said, listen, I just tell him, Concentrate on down, kind of like what the Rays won Jeremy Hellickson. Just concentrate on down, he said, because his fastball moves all over the place, and you never know from one pitch to the next where it's going to go. And he, the way that he sees it, he figures, hey, listen, if it's tough for me to catch, it's going to be tough for these hitters to hit. Yep, a lot of movement. Just keep it in the zone. Throw it for strikes. How about what Tadudo did in the World Baseball Classic? Yeah, you know, Republic. you're right about that. He's 30 years old now. He's turned 30 recently. And it has taken him a while, but he really distinguished himself in the uh, WBC. A little tapper. Tadudo you know, with a toss to first. Longoria is out of there. Ray settled for the one run on the long one off the bat of the designated hitter, Luke Scott. And it's 1 0 Tampa Bay.
One nothing lead. New face Trevor Fluke. This pitch is a strike. Fluke with nine home runs. The Twins third baseman. Hernandez ahead of Plouffe, one and two. There's Waldo Arcia next, and then Chris Parmalee. Twins come in 13th in the league in home runs and 10th overall in the league in runs scored. This one stays up and in. Two and two. Hernandez hopes that first inning home run is a trend for the Rays because he has not received much support in recent times. There's a strike on the corner. A call third strike. That's the first strikeout for Roberto Hernandez. Here's that Luke Scott home run, 101.7 off the bat. Well, yeah, the count in his favor, a nice short, quick to the baseball. Derek Shell talked about that swing path too, be able to create that basket. That was just a line drive that just would not come down. Well struck. Garcia. Takes the ball high. He has some pop in that bat. Foul ball, ball the other way that's going to slice back into the stands. The rookie has six home runs of the season, 25 batted in. Just 22 years old. Venezuela. One and two. He spent a good amount of time with Fort Myers last year. That's how quickly things have developed for him recently. Ground ball down to Zobris. No ground ball for out number two. Roberto Hernandez is thinking all day long. That's what he wants. You mentioned that that year he had in 2007, where it was almost 77 percent. This year, his ground ball percentage at 65 for his career, 71. But he also is picking up more strikeouts this year. Well, they got the double play ball out of Doman in the first to ease that situation. Two on, nobody out, and then he. He got the call third strike on Plouffe on the corner away. Something he can work over, it would appear tonight. Then another ground ball to follow that. So, on the last four hitters, things have really fallen into place for him. Rays can only hope that that trend continues throughout the evening. Long shot, gonna be foul. Well, foul. So it's a one and one count on Parmalee. Well, his last couple of starts, you know, it's been an inning here, an inning there, maybe a couple unnecessary runs, a bad pitch. But we've seen lots of long stretches, too, from Roberto Hernandez, where he has been very, very good. It seems to be that when he's really going good and he knows he feels good and has command of all of his pitches, he's working quickly, got a nice rhythm and tempo. And he strikes out Parmalee. Two strikeouts in the inning. And him out in front. The Rays are out in front. One nothing.
talking as we head to the bottom half of the second inning. You guys mentioned last inning how Joe Madden played the hot hand moving Luke up. Here's the skipper's thoughts about his lineup decision today. It's been a lot better with his decision making. I think at the plate, uh, of course, he's been hitting the ball harder, and I think they're tied together. I, whereas Maddie's been struggling a bit, and a lot of times I do move guys up under those circumstances, but I think this is the time to take a little bit of heat off of him and put a little bit more heat on Luke. So let's uh, see how it works out. Uh, I still like the idea of uh, Desmond to lefty to, to Zobrist to Longo. So the, the configuration is kind of still the same, but I just think for right now Luke's a little bit hotter at the plate. It's all about feeding Longo. And thankfully, Samuel Taduno knew that we weren't done with our soundbite yet, so he stopped his motion. Guys, back to you. Very accommodating that way. James Loney, the first hitter, now the first pitch. It's a fastball a little bit wide. 1 0. Well, Loney had his 16 game hitting streak come to an end. And there's one right back off to Duno. He can't find it. It ricochets to Maurer. And that's a base hit. And now they'll check to Duno. A shot right back at the Minnesota right hander. James Loney going right back up the middle. That ball that hit him solidly. You can hear it. Inside of that left ankle, which would be his landing foot. And I'll tell you, the way that that ball came off of his leg came right back towards the first baseline, so you know it hit him solid. You can tell by where the ball went, the sound. And when you get down in the lower leg like that, there's just no, there's nothing to protect you. There's no meat down there. Skin and bone. Well, he's going to take a picture two here and see how that feels on that. Landing foot. We're going to hear it now. And he's all right. He came out of the World Baseball Classic and felt some tightness in his groin when he was pitching in the championship game of the WBC for the Dominican Republic. At the time, a minor injury. He still threw five scoreless innings to help uh, the Dominican Republic team to the title. But when he got to the twin spring camp and uh, throwing in a bullpen, it became a little bit of an issue. And so that prevented him from getting an earlier start with the twins. And he only had three starts in the minor leagues, was 0 and 0, and 0 with the 2 7. Came up. Made his first start for the Twins on May the 24th. Gave up six earned runs in that ball game in five and a third innings. Took took a loss. Since then, in his seven starts, four and two with a 2-6-6. Six, six. So he's on quite a run. Myers takes a big cut and fouls it at the feet of Bauer. Ball one strike. Well, the one thing that we've seen from Will Myers is how quiet he stays at the plate. And balls that he can get to, he his hands explode late. He lets that ball come to him for a long time. Quick hands. Young man out of Thomasville, North Carolina. A 1-1 one -one count. A season high nine games over 500. Attempting to take full advantage of what the schedule lays out before them leading up to the All Star game. So far, so good. Seven games against the sub 500 teams, six and one. Hey, if you double that, what would that make their record be? Six and one. Oh. That would be 12 and 2, Glenn. It would. It would. That would kind of hit right on 
you were talking about. Well, that's what we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. So, hey, halfway home. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just keep hitting and pitching and catching the ball. Just that simple. <laughs> Well, that's exactly what they've been doing. It absolutely is what they've been doing. Eight straight games, no errors, just one in the last 13. The pitching has been outstanding, especially coming from the starters. They have really gotten into a really nice stretch the last two weeks or so. Yeah, they won 11 of those 14 games over the last two weeks. And the starting ERA is 195. Florimond to second one over to first, not going to be in time. They get the force at second on Loney. And Myers reaches on a fielder's choice. Well, as soon as Florman had to move to his right, it took the chances of that play being made down quite a bit. That gives Loney extra time to try to get down to second base to break it up. And Will Myers always hustling. He's getting up the first baseline. It just takes too long. It's aggressive. Matt Joyce. Down it in with the breaking ball. Matt at two forty three. It without a play in head first just in case a nice job of cutting the bases by Myers who moves well and it's first and third with one out well the secondary lead and Will Myers immediately recognizing that ball is a chopper it's going to take a little bit longer to get out to right field so as he's off and running and the plays behind him it was a quick early read made by Will Myers and he gets in easily nicely done there Well, here is Jose Molina with runners on base. One out, first and third. Ray's catcher comes into the game hitting 257 for the year. Duno you know, with a step back. With a run in the first and a threat in the second inning. That's going to be bounced to the right side and past Joyce. Myers scores. Joyce heads to third. Ball loose, but it's backed up by Deduno, and the Rays tack on a run to make it two to nothing. So Molina drives in the run. Jose Molina not trying to do too much. He's got a hole on the right side and he just pokes that ball through. Nice score run. They go first to third again. Inside, stay inside the baseball. Matt Joyce avoiding. So it's two to nothing. And here's Escobar. Yanel is hitting 251. Lower money 
it short with a toss to Dozier over to first. One pitch, the double play ball will end the inning. And the Rays pick up a run through two, two nothing Tampa Bay. Seven days. The Rays found an ace in a second lefty, Matt Moore. But now Matt Moore is handing back over that ace crown back to David Price in this tweet. Check it out. Great to have our ace close out the sweep. First CG complete game for the staff. Awesome. Now I asked pitching coach Jim Hickey before the game. So Jim, who's your ace now? And Jim responded, every pitcher is my ace on the day they start. Very clever, guys. Well, it was great to see uh, David Price pick up the first complete game of the season for the staff and uh, his first win here at the drop since July the 19th last year. How about that almost a full year. And uh, the two outings he's had have certainly been impressive. Aaron Hicks ahead in the count. Hernandez missing down and in. 2 and 0 oh Hicks followed by Florimont and then Dozier. Two balls and a strike. The left side, that's a fair ball, just fair. Fan reaching over. And Hicks will wind up at second. A slicer. Just fair down the left field line. Yeah, and that's going to cost him uh, the rest of the ball game. A little fan interference. I don't know how Hicks kept that ball fair. Usually you see these lefties reaching out like that. That ball coming off the bat, going to slice and end up foul, but not to be. You see it slicing, but stays inside by about a foot. And then the end of your night. Florman double for Hicks his eighth of the year there's a strike it's one and one Ground ball right side. Loney steps on the bag, makes the play unassisted. Hicks advances to third. Well, 
the Rays finished off the White Sox series with a three to one win a complete game for David Price picked up right where he left off against the Houston Astros controlling both sides of the plate and when he does that his kind of stuff I mean it's so frustrating for a hitter because they cannot cover both halves of the plate against a guy like David Price and he just was in and out all day long how about that he goes seven 70 pitches seven innings with 10 punch outs and just translates that right over into a complete game no walks one three ball count yeah that's amazing yeah one yeah. one three ball count hey, I'll tell you what was amazing did you catch the Manny Machado play oh, in the game that was New York really yesterday? amazing I mean what was that mm -hmm. I could watch that all day long yeah he made uh, an unbelievable throw from very difficult position I, I mean a P right over to first base to get the runner by half step and and by the way he was going so hard you know towards the, the you know the stands there just off third base going all, all away from first base and as he wheeled back to throw that it actually spun him in a circle so he never saw his ball actually get to the first baseman and it was right on the money from a long way and from a, a, a crazy arm angle. yeah and it was a legitimate out call at first no help at all no Tell you what, this American League is stocked at third base. Yes, it is. My goodness. You know, and I know that Evan Longoria, you know, he's such a pro. He has to be disappointed he's he's not going to the All-Star sure. game. I mean, you want to go? Sure. This one fair by the bag and up the line. Hicks will score. Dozier on his way to second, and that makes it two to one. So Dozier drives in his 34th run of the year. Wearing out that left field line, the Twins are here. In the third inning, Dozier. See, this is another one of those fastballs trying to go away. We've seen that a number of times in tonight's game. Trying to go away, and the ball is elevated, and it's running back across. He hit, well, he hit Dozier with it the first time. This one, yeah, Dozier that, gets him. That pitch was actually off the plate in. You know, the two fair balls here. Were pitches that are tough to keep fair. Even that one for a right-handed yeah. hitter, because it's running in on. Yeah, him. running in on him. And so tough you've got to keep get, it fair. Yeah. Well, the only thing you can do is be you're quick with the hands, and you get the hands through the zone. The bat head, the barrel stays back just a little bit, and now you've got a chance to keep that fair. If the bat head gets out too quick, you're yeah, you're going to yank that, you know, shoot a line driver into your third base coach. But he did a nice job of keeping his hands inside that baseball. The problem was that was meant to be down and away, not up and in. And Molina and Hernandez talk it over before they face Joe Maurer because we know all about Joe Maurer. Yeah, and, it's been and well documented already. Well documented, and the Rays still haven't found a consistent way to get this guy out. Hitting over 400 lifetime here at the Trop. 20 games. And now he has a man in scoring position. So is there such a thing as clutch hitting his his average lifetime average is 322 and his as you pointed out earlier with runners in scoring position it's even higher so yeah. he's even better. Yeah and, and I and I believe that there is such a thing as, as clutch hitting because I think there are certain players that have the ability in big moments to slow things down to think clearly you know there's a lot of guys that get antsy and they can put up really good numbers. You know, all the time. Hey, listen, how about just guys that can play in October and guys that can't? They get on the big stage and things start to tighten up a little bit. And they, yep. you know, they don't they don't perform like they normally do. Some guys are better in big moments because they can slow the game down and they come through. And this guy hit the, the runners in scoring position average for his career is just well. You know, the stout. idea that that there is no such thing as clutch hitting. Assumes that all at bats are equal, right? And they're not. I'm they're not, not sure that you could legitimately argue that. Uh, yeah, I, there's no question. There's no question. I mean, you to the point is, where it becomes obvious. Yeah. All you got to do is sit in a dugout, spend some time in a dugout, spend some time around the players, and you'll know that certain situations are different. Mm -hmm. They feel different. They are different. 
That's just the bottom line. I, you, don't give me some numbers and say this is all equal. That, that's hogwash. That means you probably have never been in a dugout. One and two, the count on Joe Maurer. And he shoots it to short. Escobar will go to first. Dozier advances to third. But Maurer down in the count. You, you see these great hitters. It was almost as if he was just trying to shoot it through that hole on the left side. Yep. That's that's the kind of hitter that he's become. And we referenced it earlier. 28 home runs in 2009, and in let's see now, 1,680 at bats. The last 1,680 at bats from 2010 on, just 30 home runs. He's become a, a really a spray gap to gap hitter. Does have power, but just chooses not to unleash it. I Ryan will, Doman. I, I will give you one stat that, you know, looking at Joe Maurer and hit the body of his work for his career that I find shocking is he's never driven in 100 runs. How about that? And, and the RBI situation is, is a little dependent upon who you have in the lineup. It's, oh, there's and no question so, about it. So I would say that's that's the first thing that I would uh, throw out there in that conversation. But, but you even look around at horrible teams, and they're going to have somebody driving on. And, and, and by the way, he's played on some really good teams, playoff teams. Mm -hmm. Now, they, they haven't been known for their offense, no question about it. But you would have thought, or I would have thought, yeah. bef you know, beforehand, if you would asked me how many times has he driven in 100 runs to say, oh, three or four, mm -hmm. not zero. Yeah. I need to look at the back of baseball cards a little bit more. <laughs> That's a great thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. Everybody should do that every once in a while. Just, just to refresh one's memory. Just to pull the, 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 the cards out of the pack and they, they'd smell like that, that gum that you got with it. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. Like this pitch. It's a 2 2 count to Doman. A little bit of that. Not a big differential in pitches from Hernandez when you you look at the fastball that sinker and then you go change up and slider that change up and slider in the same neighborhood yep. almost 84 85. Yeah, that, that's the one one downside is right there. You see 82 to 93 and that's that's with three pitches that But he doesn't go he doesn't go to the slider as much. He's become a fastball change sure guy, is. which is not you know It's not a bad combination for what he features if he can c control that sinker someone plays very well Pop fly short left Joyce is there and Doman is the third out. Twins score a run. Rays lead two to one, mid three.
Jim Hickey spending a little time with Roberto Hernandez. Top of the order for the Rays, Desmond Jennings. Desmond out, pitcher first, his first time. Pitch wide. Base hit the other way. Jennings aboard to lead off the third. Well, the Rays have done a nice job of that fastball that's moving away from him out over the plate, just shooting right field. We saw Molina go that way. Now Desmond Jennings. You know, we talk an awful lot about Roberto Hernandez and his ground ball percentage. To do know the same way. He is. He's a way up there. You know, he's he's almost 76 percent. The interesting thing, too, of course, he's only made eight starts. This is the ninth. Only three double plays. Yeah. Ground ball double plays behind him with that uh, that high ground ball rate. Well, he had the he had the 15 starts last year. Some appearances the year before that, and, and still his career is 75. So then you're getting into a body of work of 25, 30 starts in the big leagues, and that's why they want him just to keep the ball down because it moves all over the place. But there are some nights with a sinker ball pitcher, with a guy that gets a lot of ground balls. There are some nights that those ground balls find holes, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening right here so far with the Rays. Luke Scott lifted one over the. Right center field wall, his first time up there. Well, this is something you don't see a lot on Dino you know, also. A 3 1 fastball out over the plate. Scott rips it for a home run. Only the third home run that Samuel's given up this year. Giving up two to left handed hitters, and the other one, a right handed hitter. And that's in over 50 innings. Down to first. Morneau to Florman and then back to Morneau. That ground ball gets the 3 6 3 double play. And then he races Jennings. Well, that's also what a sinker baller can do. They can let you find the hole on one particular pitch and then turn it into two outs right after that. Only that kind of surprising that only three so far for Taduno, but that make it four here. So the bases are empty for Ben Zobrist as a result of that double play. The pitch around the knees, a called strike, says Jerry Lane. But he drops that one in. Nothing in two, a curveball. The low 80s. Shot toward left center field off the 0-2 pitch. Zobrist on his way to second. He'll turn second and hold there. 21st double for Ben Zobrist. That's what Rays hitters need to do. To do no working down in the zone the majority of the time. If he does leave one out, you got to take advantage. Look where this pitch is. They want it down. Boy, right up there around the belt. Ben Zobris all over this one. And that's that flat swing path. You know, he keeps the barrel of that bat in the zone for an awfully long time. Low arrow. Kind of the sober smirk going there. A little bit. Yeah, I like it. Frisky tonight. There's <laughs> Evan Longoria fouling that one in well, behind listen, Mauer. He's an all star for the second time. Yeah, he's got, he needs a little smirkness about A little about swagger. Him. Yeah. yeah. Kids all over town wearing the uh, Zobra's utility belt now. I saw a couple of them patrolling my neighborhood. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Longoria trying to get him home from second. Curveball stays in. One and one. 
It has been a struggle throughout Duduno's career, starting to put it together at the age of 29 and 30. He had one year in the minor leagues when he walked 95 hitters and had 34 wild pitches in a single season. What? How's that? How do you do that? <laughs> well, you know what? They did a couple years ago. He was in the minor leagues. They went around to you know each player and they had him introduce themselves and then talk about their you know uh, some pitch that they have their favorite pitch. And when he introduced himself, my name's Samuel Duduno and I have a crazy fastball. And not crazy like velocity, but crazy because he has no idea where it's going. So I guess that's how you do it. That's it. Reminds you a lot of like Miguel, but uh, it Miguel Batista mm -hmm. when he was he would he didn't know. Yeah. He reared back and threw it. It would cut, sink, it would stay straight. You just didn't know from pitch to pitch. Led him to write poetry. Yes, it did. And yeah. wore funny hats on the plane. Mm -hmm. He was writing a novel at one point and asked me um, for some characters' names, like to make up names on a bus or on a, on a plane ride. I don't remember what they were, and I don't know if they ever made it into the novel, but yeah, he was an avid writer. I would imagine the names you supplied would be uh, a big addition to a novel. Well, I can tell you, I, yeah, maybe. My favorite name is um, Bob, and then the last name is L O B L A W. <laughs> Say that one, Bob yeah. Lobla. Yeah. It's outstanding. That's a character from Arrested Development. Scott Mayo. Yeah. Season three. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. The greatest name. He said. He said when I saw the the script and I saw that was my name, I'm in. Swing and a miss. Longoria is out on strikes on the curveball. Rays get a couple hits. Do not score and leave one. They lead two to one. Fourth, Justin Morneau, the cleanup man, leads it off for Minnesota. And he hits one deep to right, and that one is out of here. First pitch, and home run number seven for Morneau ties the game at two. Well, Morneau wasting no time here in the fourth inning. And you see what it was. It's going to be a backdoor breaking ball. And this ball just floats right out over the plate. You know, that's one of those pitches. It, that's a risky pitch for an 0 1 pitch. You know, the backdoor breaking ball is kind of a surprise pitch. You want to put a guy away with it. You want to, you know, set him up to drop that on the back outside corner to get a called third strike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for an 0 0 pitch, when you have a sinker like he's got. There's no reason for it. That's what can happen. I mean, it can happen at any time. 
but it's more of a surprise pitch, and there's no point in surprising a guy. Oh, oh. Yeah, you'd like to set a guy up. Yeah. Don't don't wait. Don't let him see that first pitch out of the gate. So it's one and two now. Fly ball short center going to fall in front of Jennings. Bluff is aboard following up that home run with a base hit and we'll follow that up with Todd Callis. Todd. Earlier you guys were talking about the third baseman in the American League and the fine seasons they are having and how difficult it is to make the all-star team as a third baseman in the AL. And here you go. Miguel Cabrera speaks for itself with what he's done. Manny Machado, the phenomenal third baseman for the O's. And the next three guys all are not on the all-star team. Evan Longoria, Adrian Beltre, Josh Donaldson. Look at those numbers to not be going to the all-star game. And by the way, the guys, guys, the play you mentioned with Manny Machado, Joe Madden said that's the best play he's ever seen made by an infielder. Back to you. Well, that's uh, certainly believable. I, it'd be hard to think of another one better than that. No, that, that makes me feel better because I still say that I can watch that play on a loop for about an hour and a half. From all the different angles. That was just incredible. It's Waldo Arcia up here, the left fielder. Grounded out to second his first time. Well, we don't see the Orioles every day. There's a base hit, so three straight hits to open the inning. Bluffs headed to third. Now the throw to third, and it hits the runner. Bluff. Now man's going to try to go to second and he is out there. Hernandez backed up the play. Garcia tried to sneak into second base and Escobar tags him out. Well first of all off the end of the bat the base hit but when Arcia comes around first base I think when he saw the ball get by and Roberto Hernandez knock it down he's wondering am I going to go am I not going to go here's the base hit. Will Myers comes up throwing. But when this ball gets by and Hernandez doesn't corral right away and it kind of bounces back, that's when Arcia makes the decision to go. But Evan Longoria alertly picked it up and looked quick and was able to make a strong, accurate throw to get that out. So the Rays get it out. Here's Parmerly with Kloof at third base, one gone. Pitch is inside. I'll say this that's the best throw we've seen from Myers. Yeah. We've seen a couple that were not all that great. Well, we, yeah. And, and that's a pretty good throw right there. Yeah, we, we've seen him, you know, just kind of loft him in there. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when maybe the situation called for a little bit more firm of a throw. And then a couple times that he did try to hump up on one. Yeah, that, that was by far the best one. So that's encouraging. Because he's done so many things right. Oh yeah, he's, he's, I mean, you know, you can't do everything right all the time, but he's been impressive. Yeah, especially uh, you're know, playing right field. Yeah, I mean, that's where you're going to put your guy. You're a good defender with a good arm. But yeah, he has handled himself extremely well. I mean, very impressed with him. Armley bounces it. It's one and two. And you just know, just by if you just watch the way he handles himself, his demeanor, mm -hmm. you know. Just, you just know that the kid's going to be a success because yeah. he's not going to get up, not going to get too low. Mm -hmm. He's just going to go play baseball. Infield up, a 2 2 tie. We're in the fourth. Fouls it. Fastball coming in on his fist right there. Yep. Trying to keep him from getting the barrel to the baseball. Want weak contact with the infield in. And you'll see Joe Madden do this. Joe Madden doesn't always bring the infield in you know, late in ball games. He'll be aggressive with the defense early. His feeling is why shouldn't I be? Why, why can't I be aggressive with my defense? Why should I concede a run? If he's got the right combination of pitcher hitter. Fly ball into right. Myers going back to make the catch on the track. 
tagged by Plouffe. He will score, and the Twins are going to take a three-to-two lead on the sacrifice fly by Parmalee. So two runs home. Base is now empty. 20th RBI for Parmalee. Morneau hit the home run. Loop singled. Went to third on the base hit by Arcia. He was out. Trying to move up to second base. 9 1 5 6 on that play. Parmalee drives in the run. And now Hicks, one strike to count on him. A foul ball bounced up the right side. There's a liner into center. A base hit. So Hicks is two for two. That's four hits in this inning for the Twins. And this is one of those kind of innings that has had the tendency you know, to give Roberto Hernandez these losses. He hasn't pitched poorly, but he'll have an inning like this, put together three or four hits, a couple of runs, and he'll lose a tight ball game. Twins hitters, they know what they're going to get. The fastball and the sinker, they want to see that ball with a little bit of elevation so they can get it into the outfield. They've done a better job of doing that this inning. The strike to floor him up. And consequently, that's what Roberto Hernandez wants. The ball at the bottom of the zone and below it. And Twins hitters going after those pitches. Snap throw to first, got a chance. At first base. Hicks picked off. Molina down to Loney. That's out number three. So Molina, who's been throwing very well lately, catches Hicks off first. Three to two, Minnesota. Game of the four game series with the Twins in tonight's game at all season long. Tires Plus will donate $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. James Loney about to lead it off and a misfire again by Deduna. We've seen two of those different varieties tonight from the 30 year old right hander. Now the pitch, and it's down. Ball, no strikes.
2 and 0. The Rays have had base runners in every inning. Scott's homer in the first. They scored a run, left a man on in the second. A couple of hits and a man left on, no runs in the third. Two ball, one strike count to Loney. Toward the gap into right center field. Hicks is going to have to chase it to the track where he cuts it off. On a double by James Loney, he is two for two. Twenty-first double of the year for Loney. Now this breaking ball just hangs up out over the plate. Loney waits back on it, and then shoots that ball out into the gap in right center field. You know his 16-game hitting streak came to an end yesterday, and he picks right back up. With two already here tonight. You know, a nice job by Hicks to get over to keep that ball from going to the wall. It goes to the wall. He might have a triple, depending on the bounce. Might. And Hicks, well, depending on the bounce. I'm thinking it might bounce away. But Hicks and Jennings, two center fielders who will cover a lot of ground. Well, yeah, and you have to. The spacious in Minnesota. You've got to have guys out there that can. Range left and to the right. So now Will Myers want to know the count. Will came into the game at 256 with three home runs and 13 runs batted in. Two. It's raining in New York. Kansas City had taken a two to nothing lead there in the top of the fourth in New York. Myers behind in the count. Nobody out. Raised with the potential tying run at second. Into the dirt, blocked by Maurer. So the Rays for the fourth consecutive inning. And the base runner, they've had men in scoring position in every inning. Texas and Baltimore. Bottom of the fourth, and the Rangers and the Orioles tied 2 2. And the count is full. Hires a take on that curveball attempt. Miss. It's that fastball with a little cut action to it. And Myers is the first out. Full count. There it is. Just a little bit of side action with that ball right down the middle of the plate. Myers just misses it. Came out of that swing a little bit. Matt Joyce with a chance to drive in the run. That takes it low. The count two and nothing. Well, the Rays are on this 10 game homestand. Minnesota on a 10 game road trip. They lost two out of three in Toronto. 
Rays and the Twins, a four game series here. They'll go play New York while the Rays host Houston. It's two and one now. Tonight's game available in Spanish via SAP, brought to you by Coventry Healthcare of Florida. Scott and Molina have the runs batted in for the Rays. And Joyce trying to join them. It's three balls and a strike. Rays have won four straight. Eight out of their last nine and over the last week. 14 games, 11 victories. A three ball, one strike count. And that is ball four. So first and second with one out for Molina. Beat the Heat this season with a summer six pack. Choose any six Rays home games starting at just $12 per game. Receive up to $30 in concessions credit at Tropicana Field. All purchasers receive the first pass blue membership that comes with access to special promotions and rewards. Visit RaysBaseball.com slash six pack today. Molina bounced an RBI base hit into right field his first time up. The pitch is a strike. Our Toyota trend finds Jose Molina topping the list of highest career average against the Twins among active players at 376 ahead of Mark Teixeira, Dustin Pedroy, and Howie Kendrick. It up on the infield this time. <laughs> Dozier, after getting together with Morno, makes the catch. He bounced away from him and backpedaled to make the grab. Well, listen, these guys want to make sure they make the play. We've seen this roof give opposing players a heck of a time. And both of these guys. Well, the Twins have been happy with Dozier at second base. He played. Mostly shortstop before. And he actually, over the winter, got some instruction from Paul Molitor to work on the footwork around second base and how it's different than the other side of the bag at shortstop. That's what that's what it makes you know the, the versatile infielders. And you're absolutely right. The footwork is completely different as you turn double plays. You know, just even throwing balls to your right at short, the way you square off and throw the first balls to your right at second, you're heading towards center field. Everything's different. That's why you see these guys out here every single day taking ground balls to the left, to the right, making throws from different spots. Two men on, two men out. Here's Escobar. The big ball about, drops in. Then you think about what Zobrist. You know what Ben Zobrist did, you know, as a second baseman and an outfielder, but then last year transitioning over to become the everyday shortstop and doing it seamlessly. Yeah, we talk about that all the time, and he makes it appear seamless. Yeah, but it is not. No, that is a difficult thing to do. What that man has done. One of the reasons he's picked for the All-Star team. Yeah, think about that. It, it, ben Zobrist on that bench later in a game. A close ball game, the different options that Jim Leland has to, um, in, in, to use him. Yeah. Can use him in almost any way. And that's what managers want. They want that flexibility, they want options, and he gives it to them. Well, and Jim Leland, by the way, is also thinking, you know what, my team's got a pretty good chance of making the World Series. I'd like that home field advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to pick winning, versatile ball players, and at least in this case, it takes Ben's overs. Blocked by Maurer, and now an attempt to move by Loney. He's safely in. 
trailing in the second Joyce some nice base running by the Rays right there to move both men into scoring position right, you want to anticipate a ball in the dirt and be able to move up no question about it and this one gets far enough away this one away and it is it bounds away from Maurer it's far enough that Loney challenges and of course Matt Joyce right there he sees it he's gone well, that's huge too each of them 90 feet closer to home Second and third, two outs, one and two on Escobar. Escobar started to go, but he checked in time. Side poof with a pickup and the throw to first in time. Rays get a couple base runners, but they leave them in scoring position. We go to the fifth. It's 3 2 Minnesota. Pitching's been good. The offense has been good. It's, how about the defense? Time for the Just For Men Auto Stop foolproof stat. Yanel Escobar with 45 consecutive airless games at shortstop. Club record 52 held by Chris Gomez back in 2002. Escobar has been steady, steady, steady. And flashy, flashy, flashy. And occasionally spectacular. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I love the flair, the swagger. And he is really fit. You can just see him the way that he is. Florimont getting one over the head of Myers, who gets the carom and right, and he will hold Florimont to a base hit. Well, a nice job of recovering after that ball got over his head. A quick recovery on the carom. Yeah, he's able to get that ball quickly off the wall, turn and throw it in. You see Florimont able to just get it up of the reach of Will Myers, but they see the bare hand turn and fire. Thing that you do in a play like that, you keep that double play in order. You got a guy that can get a lot of ground balls, you've got a chance. Well, he got out of a spot in the first on a 4 6 3 double play. Now, leadoff base hit in the fifth. Brian Dozier takes a strike. Dozier hit on the elbow by a pitch in the first and then doubled in a run in the third inning. Side. 
Baltimore takes a three to two lead in the bottom of the fourth against Texas. Their third run singled home by Manny Machado who by the way has three singles tonight. He's three for three in that game. Florman back in at first. Come in 37 and 48 on the year. Hernandez with 13 steals while he's been on the mound. And we've seen a lot of teams taking off on Roberto Hernandez. Well, you know, a lot of teams have really exploited the Rays in general. They're right at the top of the heap as far as giving up the stolen base, although Molina has thrown out the last four against him. Yeah, and he had the pickoff tonight. That was huge. That was huge. Which is such a quick. Open those hips up quick and then a strong throw and Loney a nice job with the blind tag. Runner goes on the pitch. It's a strike and the throw is in front of the bag. Gorman is safely in with his eighth stolen base of the year. You figured it at some point they were going to have to go and the Minnesota Twins do not steal a lot of bags. They have. Now 29 stolen bases on the season. That is next to last in the American League. But Florimont here heading in and just gets in ahead of the tag. Ground ball, short stop. Escobar makes the throw. So that's the first out here in the fifth. We gave you the update on that Texas Baltimore. Game with the Orioles leading three to two, talking about Machado and that play. Here it is, the play from yesterday. And that's a legitimate out over there at first base. What a what a play to get that kind of of release and speed on that throw. You're, you're trying to backhand a chopper up the third base line. You don't come up with it cleanly, but you stay with it, able to get the bare hand, and then how far he was in foul territory and have to turn, throw from down under, blind throw, and it's just a missile right to first base. And like you said, no help. It wasn't a give me by the umpire. He got it by a half step. Joe Maurer and it's a 2 and 0 count now. Maurer 0 for 1 with a walk tonight. Came into the game 12 of 28 against Roberto Hernandez. Started the day tied with Baltimore for second in the East. Both teams nine over at 49 and 40. Mauer walks. So that sets up men at first and second for Ryan Doman. And Jim Hickey heads to the mound. That's the second time that he's walked Mauer not on a lot of pitches just not really want any part of him once he fell behind. And you're in a dangerous dangerous part of this twins lineup. He's retired Doman twice but then Morno hit the home run off of him. Comes up after that. Well he got Doman on a four six three double play in the first he'd love to see that happen again. Oh, yes. Right now it's a one run game three two Minnesota. 
Well, Jim Hickey has a knack too. Good things happen a lot of times after he goes out there to visit a pitcher on the mound. Gives good advice. And if they follow along, they usually get the results. Well, Hickey's had great success wherever he's been in Houston and here. Pretty good runs in both places. Continues to get the most out of the staff. Ground ball. That's a fair ball. Hernandez to the back to cover. Well, they got the ground ball, but it was back at first, and Loney had to go to. Hernandez on the bag that moves floor him on to third and Bauer up to second. And the location of this ground ball did not cooperate. It's right on the line and a nice job by Loney to, to backhand that odd, well, that odd little hop right there, kind of in between. You're moving away from him to try to get a better angle. You see him keeping his eye on that ball the entire way. And now he's got to turn and make the throw, and he does a great job of that. Well, they're going to walk more now. Who hit the home run off the slider in the fourth inning? So this will be an intentional walk. That home run, by the way, for Morno, is number 211 of his career, and that ties him for fourth on the Twins' all-time home run list with Bob Allison. Well, that was Bob Allison with the Norman Killebrew era. Is loaded situation with two outs. Trevor Floof. Floof singled and scored in the fourth. Fly ball right field. Myers is there and that retires the side. Twins leave him loaded. Do not score and we go to the home half of the fifth. 3-2 Minnesota. A week and that leads us to our AT&T Twitter poll questions of the night. There is a final vote for the fans to select the last player on the all-star ballot. Who do you like in the American League? You have a bunch of relievers to choose from. You see the list right there. Tweet your votes to at Sun Sports Rays as to who you would think will win the AL final vote. And we also have the five guys in the National League. And surprisingly already after one day Yasiel Puig is not leading Freddie Freeman actually has the lead in the NL so there are your choices tweet your votes at Sun Sports Rays guys back to you. Yeah Adrian Gonzalez actually uh, endorsed Puig said he should get the votes and 
and not Gonzalez. And there are some folks who think that Puig shouldn't even be on that list because he came up too late. Yeah, what has he played? 33 or 34 games now. So yeah, there, there's definitely a little controversy two different there. Yes, yes. I did. You know what? I did notice about those two lists, though. They're on each list, Ian Desmond on the one, and Tanner Shepard's on the other. Both of them huge Dwayne Stats fans. I'm glad you noticed those small things. It's the attention to detail. Yeah, it is. And, and I learned that from Jim Hickey. There you go. See? All that time you spent down there with Jim Hickey, it's paying off. Getting him coffee, <laughs> washing his car, all the things an assistant does. So the count is now full to Jennings. Desmond. Trying to get a board here to lead off the inning. The Rays are down three to two. And he does just that, drawing the walk. It's one thing that Joe Madden said is so much better for Desmond now that he's more disciplined, that strike zone is defined. He's swinging at strikes, draws the walk here on for the second time. Yeah, I, I, that is the big difference because as you see him draw that walk, we've also seen him a number of times going right after that first pitch. Which tells you he's ready to hit, and if the ball is to his liking in his zone, he's not going to wait around. I don't have to see four or five pitches. If I see one, the first one that I like, I'm going after him. If I don't, then I'm content to kind of work the count. And, you know, so the idea of moving him down in the order and letting him get that in order, boy, has that worked out well or what? And here's Luke Scott. Homer in the first. The pitch is a strike. Grounded into a 3 6 3 double play in the third. right now sitting on 99 home runs on the year after the blast by Scott in the first sixth in the American League and a nice take by Scott right there one and one short into left on the move reaches up to grab it so that'll be the first out in the fifth a lot of base runners both these teams have had runners in every inning with the exception of the twins in the top of the second when they went down one two three but otherwise they've been runners all over the base yeah entertaining so far a lot of movement a couple of home runs going to be the pitcher here that can calm it down for a couple of innings before he turns it over to the bullpen. Tight ball game. Ray's looking to try to tie it up, at least tie it up here. Pitch away from Ben. Zobra struck out on a breaking ball in the first and then doubled into left center field, took a fastball that way. 21st double of the year. That was in the third. Jennings draws the toss.
There goes Jennings. Pitch chopped to first. Grab there by Morno. And into second, Jennings. Just not quite high enough to chop over him. What's Morno? 6'3, 6'4. And he needed every bit of it. He needed all of that height and a well-timed jump. Or that ball dribbles down into the corner. Race may get a run out of it with Jennings' speed. And it's going to be extra bases for Zobris. But Morno flags it down. Well, here's Evan. Oh, for two tonight. Now he has... Desmond Jennings in scoring position. He pounds that breaking ball. Strike one. He tried to stay right with the break on that curveball and fouled it. It amazes me. The, the better hitters in this game and how they are pitched differently from at bat to at bat and they've got to stay up to speed on everything and you know, try to come up with you know is the guys pitch me a certain way certain trends how pitchers attack them individually all the video work they have to do and get the hit in the National League as a pitcher you know what you're gonna get most of the time and it was still difficult let alone you watch the three and four hole hitters that are getting sliders breaking balls splits all different counts all different spots in the zone Makes what they do very impressive. One and one to count on Longoria. And that's how you pitch this guy, because you come into a series against the Rays, I guarantee you. You better you could, be creative. You better be creative. And you say to yourself in the, the, the pitcher's meeting, guess who's not going to beat us? Evan Longoria. And Evan shoots it into center, a base hit. Here comes Jennings in to score to tie the game as Longoria comes through. Sometimes Evan Longoria doesn't cooperate. Right back up the middle. That's the way this game has been. Back and forth. Ebbs and flows. Rays get it done here with two outs. Pitch stays right in the middle of the plate. Well, that feels good for Longoria. He left Zobris at second in the third. He didn't want to leave another runner at second base here in the fifth inning, and he singles home Jennings with the tying run. And now James Loney. Too low. Loney two for two tonight. After the hitting streak came to an end. In the game yesterday, he went 0 for 3. A 16 game hitting streak. And another good take. Off speed changeup. Loney hit 406 for the life of the 16 game streak. There's a strike. Two and one. Rays now have eight hits. Off to do now. That will even the count at two and two. Duduno coming off a six inning outing against New York. His last time out was on the second. He left trailing in that game three to one after six innings and 102 pitches. He's at 81 right now.
ground is full. He's opened the scoring with a run in the first. Had to score a run in the fifth to tie it. 3 2. Ground ball to short. Gorman's throws to first to Morno. And the Rays settle for the tying run after the leadoff walk to Jennings. A 3 3 ball game. Brought to you by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Visit your Honda dealer for great lease and finance deals on fuel efficient Hondas. And by Checkers, feast on. Great selection there in the Ray store. Caps, hats, and lids. Marcia swings and misses. He is one for two on the night. Hot shot liner to first, caught by Loney. That is the first out. Let's take a look at our lows. Never stop improving list tonight. And for that, how about these three guys? It's the White Sox in the Chicago series. Hellickson, a run, earned runs, seven innings, six and a third, no earned runs for more. David Price, complete game with one earning. Well, the Rays doing exactly what they needed to do against an offense that had scored the fewest runs in the American League. But so often, not so much this year, but there have been times stretches with the Rays the last couple of years that they would play to the level of their competition. Yeah, they play the Yankees and the Red Sox. They get up for those games, great performances. Then all of a sudden they go out west, play Seattle, lose three out of four. Teams that you should beat. And, boy, they've gotten into this stretch. You, you talked about it from the very beginning of the stretch. And, boy, have they responded. I mean, they are taking their yep. game to another level, scoring early, pitching well, and just putting teams down. Normally looks a high fly to the left. And Joyce is there waiting. Two gone. Well, you're right. They've done exactly what uh, you would hope to see them do in this stretch. Take advantage of what the schedule gives them. And they've been uh, all business. And it's it's been come to the ballpark each day, knowing where you are in the schedule, but pay attention to that day. And that's what they've done. Picks on the ground. That's a fair ball. Down behind the bullpen, Hicks is on his way to second. Now he's going to go to third. 
And the throw is not going to be in time. Hicks goes all the way to third. Loney thought the ball was foul. Hunter Wendell stand on the call. As Hicks goes all the way to third. It was a quick call by Wendelstead. I mean, this ball off the bat of Hicks, he makes the call right now. You could see it. It hit past the bag in foul territory. That doesn't always matter. If, if Wendelstead saw it go over the corner of the bag, he's got the. It's his judgment. Boy, that was. Over the bag. That's fair. There's Florida taking a strike. And he becomes a big hitter for Roberto Hernandez. The Rays have Alex Torres up in the bullpen. Hernandez at 90 pitches. And that one does not come back. Stays in and it's a one and one count. The triple for Hicks, his third triple of the year. He has a double, a single, and a triple tonight for Minnesota. Again inside, fastball. Two and one. Squares the count. Well, the hard stuff in, and then a changeup had him out in front. And he strikes him out. Swing and a miss on the fastball. And the Twins leave a man at third. We're still tied. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Will Myers will lead it off for the Rays, followed by Joyce and Molina. Lead off. He reached out a fielder's choice and scored a run in the second. So officially 0 for 2, but a run scored. See, 10 of his hits to center field. That actually could bode well for him. Oh, listen, if he can continue with this kind of output, you'll get, you will see consistent production. Because when you're using the whole field, you, you just rarely fall into prolonged slumps. Here he is against Duduno. And a liner into center field. Hicks is there and he makes the catch of all knuckle on him yeah, out did. there. Yes, it did. Well, you could see that from up here. And from home 
plate, took a left turn. Watch Hicks. Got to get a beat on it, and th th there it goes. There it goes. Wow. Usually that doesn't translate even with the camera, but you can see that right there fading off. There's Matt Joyce. Joyce has singled and walked. Now he's ahead in the count, 2 and 0. Oh. This is the first of seven games scheduled this year between these two teams. Braves will see the Twins in Minnesota in the middle of September. Fly ball, right center. Picks closing though, and he makes the grab on that one. Two gone now. Join us Sunday, July 14th. Pop superstar Carly Rae Jepsen takes the stage following the Rays Astros game to perform her unforgettably catchy hit, Call Me Maybe. Don't miss her perform all her hits, including This Kiss and Tonight I'm Getting Over You. For tickets, visit RaysBaseball.com slash concerts. Two gone with the bases empty. And Jose Molina is the hitter. And Tapper left side. Move up with it. The third baseman makes the play, and the Rays are up and down in order for the first time tonight. We move into the seventh, tied 3 3. Roberto Hernandez departs after six innings tonight. Well, Roberto Hernandez did a nice job against this Twins ball club. Got nicked up a little bit in the fourth inning. But other than that, settled down through the fifth. Kicks out of a jam in that with the bases loaded. Got through the sixth. You know, it's a quality start. Six innings, three earned runs. He's given his team a chance to win, and that's what you want out of Roberto Hernandez. 94 pitches. Gave up the run in the third, and then two more in the fourth, including the home run to Morno. Well, you can see there too with the three walks, the hit batter, the eight hits. So he averaged two base runners in inning, and still able to get out of that by giving up just the three runs. Made some big pitches in some big spots. And he turns it over to Alex Torres, and get a load of those numbers. He continues to be lights out. They're so small, I can't read them. <laughs> The micro ERA of 0 0.38. Yeah, and when an opponent's uh, opposing team's average against you starts with a zero, it's pretty good too. 
Brian Dozier, the top of the order, takes the pitch and it's inside. Well, right now, both teams through six, three runs, eight hits, no errors. The Twins have left six, the Rays have left five. And this is the point of the game that you get to where, on paper, you say to yourself, Battle of the Bullpens. You, this is where you love the Rays' chances because they've got tremendous arm after tremendous arm coming out of that bullpen, capable of throwing up zero after zero after zero until their offense can scrape across a run. Door is ahead of Dozier. Chopper, it's foul. When we talk about uh, Fernando Rodney selling the changeup. Torres does such a great job of that. You know, it, when he really throws his changeup, it looks like he's almost humping up on a fastball. Like I'm going to get a little bit more on my four seat, and out comes the changeup, just poof. Fly ball toward left. Joyce cutting to his left, one away. The Rays getting what would qualify as a quality start again tonight. Since June 23rd, they're starting pitchers coming into this game at an earned run average of 195 with 12 quality starts. And here's one turned in by Hernandez tonight. Turns it over to Torres. Joe Maurer. Takes a fastball, first pitch, and that's a strike. How about this from Hour, too? He has all across his numbers are outstanding. 345 against lefties. And again, it goes back to what we talked about with Will Myers, the hit breakout. You look at his spray chart, it's the same thing. Left, center, right, he uses the whole field. So he hits everybody, he hits consistently. Stairs. It's one and two. There's the breakout for Maurer. How about that? More to left than to right. Double and center. Ground ball first. Loney with the toss to Torres is over there in a hurry. And Torres got off that mound. Made a beeline. Make sure he was there to cover. I mean, yeah, we don't always see that. But Alex Torres not forgetting about what spring training is all about. Ground ball to the right side. A lot easier to pull up than to get it started. Watch instantly. Sad that we even have to show that, but that's that's how you do it. He was quick out of the gate and then really poured it on. Hey, listen, that's an out. You're like, that's an out. Give himself over there. Right, Domit. Missing the change up. Doma, the switch hitter, the DH tonight, 0 for 3, left handed against Roberto Hernandez. Now hitting right handed against Torres. Strike two. Without the radar gun, you, you can't tell. You can't tell fastball or change up. Take a look at the swing. Take a look at the radar gun. That'll tell you. Into the dirt. One ball, two strikes. Outfield. Straight away, the infield overloaded with the shift on. Fly ball hit into left field. Joyce will have to go to the track for it. He's there and makes the catch, retiring the side in order. <laughs> we go to the bottom of the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time. We're tied 3-3. Three, three.
for the seventh inning. Uh, one, two, three, top of the frame for Alex Torres. Samuel did do no on the hill. And you know Escobar will lead off. Pitch around the knees for a strike. Rays went down one, two, three for the first time tonight in the sixth inning. There's a shot. Seventh home run of the year for Escobar. Now you want the ball up against Deduno. This one floats up middle in and Escobar jumps all over it. Coming into this game. Deduno in just under 50 innings have given up two home runs one to a lefty and one to a right handed hitter. In six plus he's given up two tonight one to Scott the left handed hitter one to Escobar the right handed hitter and you remember it was Escobar getting the troops fired up before the game down in that dugout having some fun loose play with a lot of confidence offense and defense. Well, now Jennings fouls it two strikes. Well that's some pop from the number nine spot in the order for the Rays. He's, what a hitter to hit ninth. That, that's what I was just <laughs> thinking the same thing. What a weapon to have down there. In the nine hole. Desmond has scored one of the runs tonight when he walked in the fifth. And he checks on this pitch as it breaks low. The Rays have Peralta up in the bullpen now. Escobar in the fifth triple of the year for Desmond Jennings back to back. Now Jennings going deep into right center field. Hicks trying to get over there to cut it off, and once it gets by him, not with Jennings' speed, about it. He sees it right there, happening right out in front of him. I tell you what, that's one of my favorite plays to watch. It's a stand-up triple or a slide, either one. We'll take it either way. I do. I love the triple. I do love the triple. Everybody should. Ron Gardner is on his way to the mound. His bullpen busy, and they've tried to take as much time as they can to give the bullpen a few extra pitches down there. So six pitches into the seventh inning the Rays have taken the lead and they have a major threat to get another run right now it's time for the Metro PCS call to the bullpen.
your boogie shoes for disco night Saturday July 13 when the Rays take on the Astros. The disco era lives post game when KC and the Sunshine Band perform their classic dance tracks. That's the way I like it. Get down tonight and shake your booty. For tickets visit RaysBaseball.com slash concerts. Caleb Thielbar, the new pitcher, the lefty, and boy, what a start he's had. He is not allowed a run in 17 appearances. Twins record for most consecutive appearances without a run allowed to start a major league career. And a cool name to boot, Caleb Thielbar, and he gives up nothing. Well, Luke Scott will try to get the additional run home. It's inside. One ball, no strikes. Well, this is a good matchup here because Scott hitting 300 against left handed pitching. Something has got to give. Infield in, too, so Luke Scott just looking for solid contact. One and one. Bar drafted out of South Dakota State. Of course he was. Did he kill a bear when he was three? <laughs> Just a little bit of that went foul in and out of the bit of Mauer. Drafted by the Brewers. And now back in his home state. It's wide and blocked by Maurer. Escobar started with the home run. And the triple from Jennings. That was the end of the evening for Deduno. Worked six innings. Gave up ten hits, four runs, plus a man on. Walked a couple, struck out three. Two two to Scott. And he's out on strikes. So Luke Scott is out number one. Not able to ride that fastball up in the zone to get it over the swing of Luke Scott. 2-2 two -two count. Right to the top of the strike zone. Just missed it. And now Ben Zobris will turn around to bat right-handed against the lefty. Ben doubled in the third. He's one for three. Look out. A check swing foul ball near the photographer's well. Strike on Zobrist. Outing Saturday at inning against the Blue Jays in Toronto. Two and one, the fastball was low. Ron Garden higher in his 12th year as the manager of the Minnesota Twins. Well hit and we'll get out of here. Home run for 
Luis Obris. A two-run blast. Home run number six. And the Rays open things here in the bottom of the seventh. It's six to three. Here it is. Ben Zobers trying to come in and quick and short to the baseball. Look at that. Just a quick flip of the wrist. Ball just jumps. Skips right off the top of the wall. Well, it's now six to three as Zobris hits his sixth home run of the year. Five runs off Duduno and finally one off Thielbar. Time for the Metro PCS call to the bullpen. A triple in between Escobar's home run and then Ben Zobris hit a two run blast. Jared Burton makes his 40th appearance. Almost a strikeout an inning. One and six record though, and he had rate just over four. Evan Longoria takes a strike on the outside edge. This is a guy who had done a really nice job in the setup role last year for the Twins. ERA just over two. And, and pretty much had been the eighth inning guy yep. for them, but has had some struggles. Oh, 2 And that's part of the process. Uh, that's just part of the process at this level. Very rarely do you go up and see a guy go into a certain role and just dominate from there on out. It's a constant adjustments as the league sees more of you. Your job to answer. One ball, two strikes to Evan. So it's a three home run night for the Rays. The home run by Escobar, number 100 of the year for the Rays, and Zobris now hitting 101. Oh, Evan hits a high fly ball into left. That ball catchable on the track. Two gone. Garcia tracking that one down toward the corner. First baseman, number 21, Be James Loney. Loney right back to collecting hits tonight after the 16 game hitting streak ended yesterday. He's two for three tonight.
Strike one. A good off speed pitch there by Burt. Change up. That's a hard change up. 87. One and one. Burton came up to the big leagues originally with the Cincinnati Reds. That was in 2007. Originally drafted by Oakland back in 2002. Those here at second base takes care of the chopper. So the Rays are finished. They score two. The first one coming on a home run. By Escobar, then the triple by Jennings, and a home run by Zobrist makes it a two home run, three run inning, 6 3 Tampa Bay. And with that, the Rays carry a three-run lead into the eighth inning, 6-3. Joel Peralta will be the new Rays pitcher. Six innings from Hernandez, one for Alex Torres, who is the pitcher of record. His first pitch is a fastball, strike one. Peralta on for the 46th time. Strike out an inning, opponents average under 200, and well, continuing to face tough hitters. And this is exactly how the Rays bullpen sets up. You get Torres in there, he throws a scoreless. Rays offense does come alive, scrape across three runs. Now you look to close it out, your back end guys. So Peralta in here leading. I know this is really surprising. Leading the league in appearances. It's something he does just about every year. In fact, the last three years, he leads everybody in appearances in the American League. Once again. And he has Bruno out in front. Boy. Well, he throws that curveball, he throws the split, and even when they're up. Because of the change of speed and his delivery, these hitters are oftentimes out in front. Yeah, so many times you see, you know, that your setup guys are you know, big velocity guys, sharp slider, 94, 95. Peralta does it with 90, but he just throws everything, all like that right there. Weak contact. Look at his strikeouts. And Escobar takes care of that. The split. And Morneau is out in front.
Well, let's take a look at the starting pitching matchup tomorrow presented by Chevron. Be Chris Archer on the hill. Kyle Gibson will make the start for Minnesota and Archer. He's fun to watch every time he goes out there. Great arm. And he's, he's very excited about the progress he makes. Now are you just saying that because you've seen a lot of them or are you just going off the photo of them? You could go off of either one. <laughs> That's exactly right. That photo indicative of the kind of kid that he is. And they've even had to, you know, peel him back a little bit from his antics out on the field, the excitement that he was yeah. showing. Two. Well, the great thing about him, those antics, they're genuine reactions. It's just back him off a little bit. That's right. They're not showing anybody up. Very innocent, but he is an excitable young man and a tremendous talent. Great arm. Fun to watch. And you're right, never boring. A few pitchers like that on this staff. <laughs> Stairs. It's a ball two strike count. Booth getting his first look at Peralta. Ball catches Kluf looking. Yeah, and nothing to complain about here. This is a perfect pitch. I mean, this is you just can't walk it to the plate in a better spot. Tell you, it's been a it's been a very good inning for Peralta. Morno, who he faced initially, was six out of nine with a home run lifetime off him, and boy, he had him out in front. Yep, got him on that little popper, and then Kluf looking, two up, two down. Waldo Arcia he takes a strike. Six for Hernandez, three runs, eight hits, one perfect inning for Torres. And two out in front of the split and over it. He is staring him down too. That's the quick abbreviated delivery by Joel Peralta trying to catch a hitter napping. Just was wide with it. Better be ready. Fly ball lifted into left. Joyce puts it away. One, two, three in the eighth. Go the Twins. Bottom of inning eight coming. Six, three, Tampa Bay.
Tampa Bay will host Houston part of Family Fun Day. And making Family Fun Day even more fun is the giveaway, the DJ Kitty Confetti Snow Globe. Who would want to take one of these home? It's to kids 14 and under, brought to you by Sage Accor Life Insurance. And, guys, I was doing a little research before this hit, and I found out there's actually a website, How to Turn Your Cat into DJ Kitty. What? <laughs> yeah, be careful with that. Not an easy transition. Will Myers leads off the bottom of the eighth. Takes a slider. Brian Presley. One ball, no strikes. It's now two. Two and oh. Kansas City leading the Yankees. They've restarted that game and they're now in the top of the sixth. Two nothing Kansas City. And Texas leads Baltimore eight to five in the bottom of the seventh at Baltimore. Three and oh. Twenty eighth appearance for Presley with a two forty three. And he walks Myers. So Will is on. To open the eighth. And Matt Joyce is on his way to the plate. Matt hitting out of the seventh spot in the Rays lineup tonight. Presley finds a strike on the inner corner. To do know for six plus, charged with five. Theobar bar in third of an inning and one run. Burton got two thirds credit. And now it's Presley. Departs. Going to check to make sure everybody's all right there. Paul Harker immediately out of there. In the race dugout. That was a straight shot where you saw the mask come flying right off Jerry Lane's face. Examination and some questions, and you got a smile out of him. That's a step in the right direction. But boy, that's you talk about a direct shot. Mm. He says, I might need to see a good dentist if you know one in town, but uh, otherwise. I'm okay. <laughs> this is the general impression you get. Boy, I'm telling you. We see this occasionally. And they really take a beating. Yeah. Well, he put himself, you know, in the in the position there to make the best possible call. He was kind of exposed. A lot of umpires are tucked in behind the catcher. He was just out there. His ball and strike call may not be as loud going forward. But he's going to hang in there. Well, the mask goes back on. And he's ready to resume. It's working on 25 years of Major League time. Jerry Lane. You, 
you like him for his toughness. He's a good natured guy. And, a, and a, he has a little bit more of a tendency to open the strike zone, which is also good. It makes him one of our favorite umpires. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we're glad he's okay. That's right. <laughs> Two strikes to count, Matt Joyce, which is low, one and two. Into the dirt, blocked by Maurer, and appreciated by Jerry Lane. Two and two. Well, Jamie Wright's up alongside Fernando Rodney down there in the Rays bullpen. Let's see what the Rays do with their offense here in the eighth. Leadoff man Myers at first. There he goes. The pitch is fouled back. A little protective swing there. Now the Rays continuing to be aggressive here to try to get that fourth run, fifth run. You just never know what you're going to need. And Another great job by Peralta. Well, this raised bullpen really since the end of May has been a shut down bullpen all the way through. I mean everybody's throwing well. Swing and a miss. Had him out in front over that pitch. So Joyce is out on strikes. Yeah, there's not a lot of pretense in that bullpen. You know, there's some tomfoolery as you would hope. But uh, then just go out and do your job. Take care of business. And boy, that guy does all the time. Yes, he does. Good you, natured, as you can see yeah. right there, always. You can't help but have this guy be one of your favorites. No doubt. No doubt. And the only time you don't see him with a smile on his face, there you go. From about the time the game starts until he's finished. <laughs> That's about it. Molina, a little chopper right side. It skips through over the glove of Dozier. Went into the slide trying to come up with it. And Myers goes to third. And you know what? They, listen, Brian Dozier's a better second baseman than I'll ever be, but I don't know if he had to go down right there. Jose Molina running. He was close enough to that ball just to knock it down. I don't know why you go down into that slide. And you see right there, it takes the glove low. The ball gets over it. So it's first and third. Molina with his second hit. You know Escobar. Escobar gave the Rays the lead when he homered in the seventh. He's got three in the seventh to take a 6 3 lead. Liner into right will be caught by Parmalee. He's going to fire it to the plate. Myers on his way and he scores. I think that ball got a part of Myers. Down to second base goes Molina. Myers scores on a sacrifice fly by Escobar. Now it's seven to three, and uh, Myers, I think, was hit somewhere in the chest by that throw. Yeah, he got he got hit pretty good. Parmalee, the throw, obviously accurate as he slides in. Watch this ball come in. Boom! Catch him right in the right side, upper torso. Boom! He's like, come on. <laughs> So it's now a seven to three game. Well, the throw is, I mean, pretty good throw. And the pitch to Molina or to Jennings is a strike with Molina at second base. They charge Parmalee with an error for allowing Molina to move up. That's a tough error because he made a great throw. You got a guy trying to score from third base and you throw on a fly and get him sliding right in the chest. So Jennings goes out to Hicks. Rays add a run. 
We go to the ninth, 7-3. the Rays and the Twins will play game two in the four game series tomorrow. We'll be on the air with Rays Live, the pregame show beginning at 6.30, presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Tell you about Joe Maurer, the all-star starting catcher from the Minnesota Twins. Also, Chris Archer will be on the mound, and that all begins tomorrow at 6.30. Then, today, after the game, it's our Rays Live postgame show presented by Checkers. We'll have some interviews from the Rays Clubhouse. As always, you will hear Joe Madden's press conference. I'll be out with Arrested Estrada on set and Dwayne Stats and Brian Anderson with their breakdown of this game. All that following tonight on Rays Live presented by Checkers, guys. Well, a good job of uh, taking care of all that business, Todd. Jamie Wright will come on to take care of business in the ninth inning with the Rays leading 7-3. to three. 40th appearance for Wright. 2-1 and one with a 288 earned run average. He'll face Chris Parmalee. Who drove in a run with a fly ball to right in the fourth. Otherwise 0 for 2. Picks will be next and then Florimon. Breaking ball from Jamie Wright. Well, the Rays trying to win their fifth in a row, trying to go 10 over 500 for the first time this year. Out to short. You know, Escobar's throw in plenty of time, and Parmalee is the first out in the ninth inning. Jamie Wright, another member of that race bullpen who has really been throwing the ball well. You remember back to spring training, struggling a little bit with that sinker, trying to get that thing going, and it's such a finesse field pitch that sometimes it takes a while. But boy, he has found that. His curveball's been very good. Cutter in on the lefties has been an effective pitch for him. Got a lot of weapons to get you out with. And a lot of experience knowing how to pitch guys. Yep. Ball. A little wide to Hicks. Hicks doubled in the third. He singled in the fourth and tripled in the sixth. He's three for three. He does have some occasional pop in his bat. The chopper foul just outside of first. Oh, now it's foul. <laughs>
Texas hitting in the top of the ninth at Baltimore holding an eight to five lead. New York batting in the bottom of the seventh at home against Kansas City and the Royals have a two nothing lead in that one. Well, they've added a run now. This pitch is low to Hicks. Two and one. Field line into the corner. Extra bases. Hicks is four for four. Falling two bases short of the cycle. But what a night. Two doubles, a triple, and a single. Yeah, this ball just stays out over the plate. You're right. Four hits, three for extra bases. We've seen what he can do defensively too with the speed covering ground. Yeah, he's an exceptional center fielder. We saw that in the spring out of him. Here's Foreman. He's one out of three tonight. Pitch is a strike. Three game of a four game series against. Minnesota. Boston leading the East by four and a half at the start of the day over the Rays and the Orioles. Red Sox are on the West Coast. They play Seattle tonight, and Felix Hernandez will make the start against John Lester. Down, popping away from Molina, and Hicks will go to third. Curveball there that will be scored a wild pitch. And yeah, that's something with a guy like Hicks with that kind of speed, that should be automatic. A ball in the dirt. Very rarely is a catcher going to come up with a clean scoop. So it's 2 2 to Florida. And the curveball missed. And the count is full. See, Jose Molina trying to present that as a strike on the outside corner. That was just a little bit too far off to sell. And a soft liner in the center for a base hit. That's going to score Hicks. Florman is aboard. And that will make it a 7 to 4 ball game. And out comes Joe Madden. So Fernando Rodney down in the bullpen. And Joe Madden with a run home and a runner at first and a three run ball game. Will make the call. It's a Metro PCS call to the bullpen.
one out in the ninth inning. The Rays leading by three. He becomes the fifth Rays pitcher. Well, Fernando, 38th appearance, 49 strikeouts to 36 and two thirds, and he has really started to put it together. And we talked about the, the Rays bullpen really coming out. You know, before May 27th, they had the worst ERA in baseball. From May 27th on, second best in baseball, and that's exactly when this guy turned it around and really started to become consistent, the consistent Fernando Rodney that we saw all of last year where he put together, well, a historic season. Brian Dozier. In the batter's box. Rodney's pitch up and in a fastball. One and zero. Those are hit on the elbow by a pitch in the first. Doubled in a run. Doubled in a run in the third. Rodney misses again. A two ball no strike count. And Rodney misses for the third time. Yeah well the first two up and in you see him try to make the adjustment there and stay on that pitch a little bit longer. Trying to go down and away and get that good extension the first couple coming out a little early that one a little bit late trying to find that middle ground in the zone. And that's a strike. Makes it three and one. Come on, Fernando! That's the way you catch! And there is strike two on a fastball. So he's back full with him in the count. And has found the medium happy ground and back in the zone. Still here, you're just not quite sure if you're Brian Dozier. Full count. You can get the fastball, you can get the changeup. He lifts a popper into shallow right, got the fastball. Myers makes the catch. And nice job of coming back. Three straight out of the zone, and then all of a sudden it clicks into place. Two outs. And the catcher Joe Maurer about to step in. Maurer three for 14 in his career with a home run. Runner takes off. He'll move into second without any concern, indifference. And the pitch a strike to Maurer. Line drive going to be grabbed there by Escobar, who makes the catch. Allen Porter, the second base umpire, makes the call on the sinking line drive to end this game. And Fernando Rodney comes on to get Dozier and Maurer. To end it, and the Rays have taken a 7 to 4 victory here in game one of this four game series. And they've gone 10 games over 500 for the first time this year. The Rays picking up their 50th win of the year to go with 40 defeats. So a good start to this series. The good fortune on the homestand continues. Rays have won five in a row and nine out of ten now. Torres will get the victory here. He is three and all. Oh. Rodney picks up his 20th save. Duduno, the losing pitcher, his record is four and four. Took two hours and 55 minutes to play this game. 
A contest that saw the Rays hit three home runs. Luke Scott has been red hot, hit one in the first inning. The Rays hit a couple in the seventh. You know, Escobar started the seventh with a home run, and Ben Zobris hit a two run shot in the seventh inning for the Rays. Todd is standing by with Ben right now. All right, Dwayne, thank you, Ben. Seems like a few better at bats lately. You're happier the way things have gone at the plate the last couple. I know in Houston you weren't thrilled with the ABs. Yeah, you know, just just um, you know, trying to feel more comfortable up there, and and uh, been fortunate to hit some balls in the barrel recently. And um, you know, it's good to get a couple good uh, extra base hits tonight. And you know, our our team has been swinging it really well up and down the lineup. And uh, you know, you can't say enough about um, you know our, our whole team the way we're playing. Caleb Thielbar is a guy who hadn't allowed anything. How do you go up against a guy you've never seen before? Would you get a quick, quick scouting report on him? Yeah, just a quick one. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, a guy like that, he's pitched really well coming up. And, uh, you know, he's got to give one up at some point. And, and uh, we were fortunate to get a couple insurance runs there after Uni's big hit. Yeah, you mentioned the team concept and, and the offense all the way through. Yunel Escobar at the bottom of the order comes up big again. Uh, you enjoy like as alongside him in the field and then watching what he can do at the bottom of the order. Man, he's amazing. He really is. He's a spark plug for our team. Uh, you know, the way he's played all year, uh, he works really hard and, and has a lot of energy out there. And he's a big part of this team. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're fortunate to have him. And ben, this is the stretch going into the All-Star break where you guys thought you might be able to make a move. It seems like everything's clicking as well as it has all year long. Yeah, yeah, our team is feeling great right now. Um, you know, obviously we played really well. Uh, we look to continue that as much as we can. And, um, you know, uh, all, that's all we can ask is just keep keep trying to play the game the way we can play it, and things are coming together. Nice job tonight. Thanks. Thanks, Todd. All right, guys, Ben Sobers, big home run for the Rays. Back to you. All right, Todd, thank you. Victory for the Rays, 7-4. to four. And so they stand to potentially pick up some ground depending on what happens in Seattle tonight that's Boston and Seattle out there Ray started the day tied for second and the Orioles are batting in the bottom of the ninth trailing right now 7-4 Rays win it back in a moment <laughs> 